Hello, ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Today, we are going to be comparing the Insta360 Ace Pro versus the GoPro Hero 12 Black, a battle of the action cameras, if you will. There are some big differences in underwater footage between these two cameras, and those differences could be the deciding factor in which camera you choose for your underwater video, whether you're scuba diving, free diving, snorkeling, or doing anything else in the water. We're gonna focus primarily on camera features and operation underwater. We'll look at white balance, color, and overall image quality, again, underwater. And we'll also look at low light performance. But before we start, there's two important notes to let you know. First, Insta360 was nice enough to send me this Ace Pro for the comparison review, and I get to keep it. I've reviewed action cameras for a long time, since long before this YouTube channel, and have reviewed a lot of other photo equipment and underwater photo equipment. So I'm pretty excited to get to do this heads up comparison and a review. Insta360 gave me some talking points on the camera naturally, just like any press release for any camera, but I've got the freedom to say what I want to say about the camera and about the comparison with the Hero 12. So that leads me to my second point, which is full transparency in this camera comparison. I think the simplest and easiest way is to put the footage on screen and let you guys take a look for yourself to see which camera you prefer and which you feel has that better color and white balance and overall image quality and low light performance underwater. So that's what we're going to do. As you can probably see here, the Ace Pro is just a little larger than the GoPro Hero 12 Black. That's because it's built around a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor compared to the GoPro's 1.9 inch sensor. So just like with prosumer cameras, the larger sensor will capture more light. It will also record greater dynamic range in the scene and it creates the opportunity to create better color underwater. The Ace Pro's lens was also co-engineered by Leica. So I'm not sure exactly what that meant in terms of engineering and the business arrangement, but suffice it to say that it says Leica right there on the lens. And if you ask any photographer, they will tell you positive things about Leica. So great image quality, great lens, great build. The Ace Pro also features a brand new five nanometer AI chip, which enables fast performance and a lot of advanced functionality. So that's everything from recording accurate color and white balance underwater and processing all of that information, all the way to a new pure video mode, which is meant for night shooting and effectively denoises the footage frame by frame as it is being recorded to the camera, to the memory card, which is it just takes a lot of processing power and to be able to do all of that work in real time, frame by frame in a traditional color space is just very impressive and it's enabled by that AI chip. Note that I'll be sharing footage straight out of each camera and I won't be using any flat color profiles or free frame video or ProTune because I think most people who are shooting action cameras just want that simplicity and ease of use of taking the camera underwater, shooting their video and easily sharing it to social media or with their friends. So yes, you can get much better and more professional quality or color match to other cameras you may be shooting with on a project as you're taking it into your timeline to edit, but we won't worry about those advanced settings. We're gonna keep it simple here and show you the footage right out of camera. The one exception is that I'm gonna try editing one clip from each camera in their native app. On the Ace Pro, I want to open up the app and try AquaVision 2.0, which is a one-click uh, color correction solution for your underwater video, and see how that works compared to editing GoPro's video in the GoPro Quick app and applying color correction suitable for underwater there. So we'll check that out, but that will be the only post-processing I'm going to do. Both the Ace Pro and the Hero 12 Black have HDR video, which stands for high dynamic range. Now on the Ace Pro, that is automatically enabled at 30 frames per second, 25 and 24 frames per second. Whereas on the GoPro, you need to flip to Pro Controls and then turn that on manually. And what that does is it will create better color and exposure in the shadows of the image and in the lighter, brighter white areas of the image. The idea being that you have more data from the white point to the black point, which will give you a more pleasing image with less burnout or, or underexposure in the frame. So what else? The GoPro definitely doesn't have this 2.4 inch flip LCD screen, which is convenient if you wanna do some blogging. Hey guys, how's it going? This is me 
or if you want to do a low camera mode, something like this, and still be able to see it. You see that in skateboarding videos a lot. They hold the camera really low. Um, but what's also really cool is that it is huge. This 2.4 inch screen is significantly larger than other action cameras underwater. It's a pleasure to view, it's bright, and it, it almost doesn't feel like you're looking at an action camera screen underwater where you're not quite sure what you're seeing, what's exposed right. This screen makes a huge difference and that other size is very welcome for underwater video, even underwater photos with action cameras. One last feature to point out is the magnetic mount on the Ace Pro. You get this little mount and it clicks right up into the camera. It does have clicks so it's really secure. And then you can put the buttons, boop, off comes the camera. Super cool, super fast, super easy to use, very secure, there's no wobble. With the Hero 12, you still have the traditional clips that come out and you use the regular mount and you put the screw through and you twist it and you can barely reach it, you twist it back out. The other thing is these have a little bit of wobble sometimes unless you're really clamped in there tight, which is a little disconcerting. You know, I like all my gear really secure and firm and not jiggling around or anything like that. One big note is that both cameras do use that traditional mount inside of the dive housings. So that's a quick overview of the features. If you have more questions, drop them in the comments and let's continue in this video. Let's talk camera operation underwater. As you may or may not know or have guessed, we don't have access to touching this LCD screen when the camera, both cameras are in their dive housings underwater. So we're limited to the shutter button on top of the camera and then this power button and mode button on the side of the camera. Now it's the exact same placement on both cameras, shutter button on top, power and mode button on the side, and that's how we control the camera inside of the housing. Now, one thing I always advise people to do is to turn on quick capture on the cameras. So what that does is if the camera screen goes to sleep or if the camera completely shuts off um, after four minutes, five minutes to save battery power, all you do is you push the shutter button, the camera wakes up, turns on and starts recording video. Now video is the default. If you really wanted it to record still photos, you could set the quick capture to wake up and shoot a still photo. But the default is that it wakes up and shoots video. For basic video shooters, you can use both cameras almost right out of the box. You do want to download the app and that will prompt you to choose your language selection, update firmware, and get the camera ready to start shooting. But that's it. It's a quick process and then you're ready to go. I'm going to take it one step farther in this review though. That's because both the Ace Pro and the Hero 12 allow you to configure custom presets. And that allows you to get a custom setting group, set it as a preset and access those from within the dive housing when you're shooting underwater video. It's huge. It is the way we can use multiple settings and access a lot of the camera functionality underwater while diving. All you have to do is think ahead and configure those presets based on macro shooting or wide angle shooting or fast action or whatever else it might be that you want to shoot. On the Ace Pro, you get to configure Quick Switch, which allows you to customize exactly what presets or standard video photo time-lapse options appear when you hit the Quick Switch button. So what I did is I configured three presets for underwater video and had those one, two, three. So it was real quick for me to hit this button and cycle through all of those. With the GoPro 12, it's a bit different. Your presets are categorized under video mode, photo mode, or time-lapse mode. So what you have to do is hold the mode button and push the shutter button to access the presets within that mode. So let's say we're in video, I need to hold the mode button and push the shutter button to access that menu. Sometimes I hit that and I end up in photo mode, I have to push the button back to video mode and then I have to try it again. Um, so it's a little tougher just ergonomically and also takes two hands oftentimes. You might be able to get around like this if you have bare hands and you're just hand holding the camera or have a short stick. But if you have the camera mounted on a tray like I do or a, a selfie stick or even on top of a larger housing, sometimes it's difficult to get your hand over and simultaneously hold two buttons. So in terms of using the camera and switching between different presets to access different settings, the Ace Pro has the quicker solution more ergonomic solution hands down. 
And all that said, you can simply set up one preset with some settings that you've deemed to be better than the default out of the box and just use that one preset. Once you set it, you can always come back to that preset and you don't need to fuss with anything else. So even if you are a basic user, there may be some settings that you do want to change or optimize for what you're shooting. Make that one preset, always use that preset. It's the same camera, it's just one click, easy action camera. And that's on both cameras. To learn more about presets, check out the link in the video description below where I will answer some questions and share a lot more information. Now let's talk about the settings I used to make sure that our underwater video comparisons were as accurate as possible. Apples to apples comparisons with the most equivalent settings I could between the two cameras. So on the Ace Pro, I configured two presets. The first one was 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. And if you remember, 30 frames per second automatically enables HDR video. So that is on. I also left the lens on ultra and I also left image stabilization on standard. The rest of the camera settings are default out of the box. For my second preset, I used 4K 60 frames per second. And I oftentimes recommend that around fast action because 60 frames per second allows you to create 50% slow motion when you're editing or post-processing. So it's a highly recommended setting and I wanted to check out how that worked. Finally, I did actually have a third preset where I tested pure video mode that we'll talk about when we're reviewing the actual footage. Now on the GoPro Hero 12 Black, I switched the camera from easy controls to pro controls. Out of the box, the camera comes in easy mode, which uses automatic video and is effectively like a simple point and shoot camera, which is easy to use and great for some people. But to gain access to those presets, I, I turned on pro controls and for my first preset, I chose 4K resolution, 30 frames per second, and I turned on HDR video because that's a manual option. The lens I left at wide and image stabilization, the hyper smooth image stabilization, I left on, which is a standard and the default. The only other setting I adjusted out of default was adjusting the bit rate to high to better match the Ace Pro. I left bit depth alone at eight bit because you would only use 10 bit if you're post-processing and I'm not doing that in this video. The second preset was 4K60, again, to match the Ace Pro. So in case you're curious about underwater and all this talk about housings, here is the rig I used to test these side by side. So what I did is I mounted each of these dive housings to an ultralight camera systems TRDM2 tray along with the handles. And what I did is a lot of people will use their tray like this. I decided to flip it upside down. I just find it a lot easier to use and it puts the cameras higher up in front of my face and gives me full access to handle both of these housings. Now they're close together. It's as close as I could get to show an equivalent uh, angle on the scene and work with the exact same lighting and stuff. So this is our side to side rig, again with both housings and a nice tray and handles from ultralight. So now I think we're ready, let's dive in. And here we are in Monterey, California, about to start this dive. And you'll notice Ace Pro on the left. And I'm already seeing a little more light in my mask on the Ace Pro on the left here. So lending towards more of that HDR, uh, higher dynamic range shooting here at 30 frames per second. And you'll start to notice some of the color too. We saw it in that last clip with bluer water and we're seeing it here. And especially now that we're introducing the kelp, um, with the Ace Pro versus the GoPro Hero 12. So look at those sun rays and the color of that kelp itself. Um, we're in shallow water right here, but you'll notice as we go deeper, we'll, we'll start to look at those colors as well. And I get a little distracted sometimes with the, the sunlight twinkling through the kelp, especially on these spectacular winter days like this. So we're, we're taking our time, we're gonna ease into it, tr really try to appreciate some of the, the color and the dynamic range here in the scene and the image quality. Here we go again, we've got some tube snouts and look on the footage on the right, the GoPro, there's a bit of motion jitters. Now this is something that the Ace Pro on the left does really well. When HDR is active, it does very well in motion. We could see that the GoPro was struggling just a little bit with the HDR on with a little bit of that motion. And here's another shot looking towards the sun. 
And now we're at depth. So now we've descended to about 45 feet here at the Monterey Breakwater. And the water's blue, but it's not tropical visibility. So there's a lot less light down here at about 45, 50 feet than you would have in blue water in crystal clear visibility. And now we had some sea lions come to hang out and play and do their thing. So you'll notice here at depth, again, we're at 45, 50 feet. We've got a lot more reds and magentas in the Ace Pro with that frame by frame uh, color correction. So you're really getting more, more of a white in the sand. I'd say this still definitely needs some color correction in post, which we'll try out in the AquaVision 2.0, but really nice so far at depth. And here I am. So a lot nicer color in my opinion, truer whites and better white balance in the left with the Ace Pro. Here's another blade of kelp. And this is about 25 feet or so. So we're still in the shallows looking at all of this. Here's another scene here. You can really see backlit some of those reds in the Corynactus, which is really cool. And as we're swimming here, so now we were at that 25 feet of depth and we're gonna descend and see what happens here. And what I do notice is that the GoPro does really well here in the color as we're descending. We, we had a moment, we're starting to lose it now, but we had that moment where it was actually doing a nice job with that change. But as you'll see here, when we get down, the Ace Pro is creating more of an accurate white. So that color balance is more pleasing and more accurate compared to what most people are trying to uh, uh, color correct for in post with third party apps or themselves. So here we are 45, 50 feet. And this is my test of pure video. I shot the Ace Pro pure video against the Ace Pro without pure video. And you'll see that pure video is on the left. And what I think happened is the footage got smoothed out a little bit. You can start to see some of that smoothing. And also the color correction isn't as strong in that scene with the pure video on. It's no surprise, it's meant to be used at night. So this is not a really good test. I just wanted to show one clip to show what it does do underwater in daylight conditions. But pure video is best for nighttime shooting. And now we're spicing it up a bit more with dual 4300 lumen video lights to see how the white balance and the image quality adapted to having that artificial light underwater. And you'll see that we've got really great color with the Ace Pro on the left. The GoPro is still a little bit green even with that artificial lighting. Here you will see we've got a couple of uh, starfish here and that nice same blue color with the Ace Pro. The GoPro footage is also a little more jumpy here. We're back at 30 frames per second HDR and with a little bit of movement of the water, the, the stabilization um, isn't as strong with the HDR video enabled. And this is a fun little test. We're down at 50, 55 feet here on the sand and I'm turning off the video lights to see how the white balance and the color correction adapts underwater. We just saw the subtle change with the cameras now that the, the artificial lighting is off. So even with the, the change, that dramatic change in light, the Ace Pro is doing really well at depth. And here we go at 60 frames per second. Just wanted to throw in the faster frame rate with video lights. We had a cormorant come down, swim down to say hello. So here we are just looking at what that cormorant's doing. But you'll see we get that same nice color and image quality in the Ace Pro as we did at 30 frames per second. You'll notice that the water through Snell's window up at the top is less overexposed where the sun is shining down. Again, pointing out to the great dynamic range of the camera due to the larger sensor. And now the dive is over. I've got the Insta360 app open up on my phone and I don't think I showed everyone this, but we saw a little harbor seal. Swam by to say hello. But what I really want to do is show you AquaVision 2.0. So we pick a clip. I think this one's really nice with some white here. And if you tap it, you have access to the AquaVision 2.0 button. And here you can adjust the tone of the image and what you're seeing in the video. And once you find something you like, like maybe that looks about accurate, we're here, then you can adjust the intensity. So 0% of the effect or 100% of the effect. So this is really nice so that you can really hone in the color and get your video looking just the way you want it before you export it for social media. And now I've opened up the GoPro Quick app on my phone. I'm here at the same clip and we can start to watch that. And if I want to edit it now, I'll hit the pencil icon right there. 
And then I can scroll over until I see adjust to get some manual control over the adjustments I want to make. And I will scroll again to find temperature for color temperature, AKA white balance. And I can start to make my adjustments right here. So maybe I'll find what I think is right. Something like that. I've got some other adjustments I can make just like with the Ace Pro app and third party editing software. But it takes a couple more steps than using AquaVision 2.0. So there we have it. The Insta360 Ace Pro versus the GoPro Hero 12 Black for underwater video. I'd love to hear your feedback. So leave all your comments and your thoughts in the comments section under this video. And stay tuned for more videos on action cameras, the Ace Pro, and all sorts of underwater photo and video tips. See you in the next one.